So I'm just going to be talking about one of the greatest unsolved problems in modern mathematics. Well, not modern, in terms of human solving. It's the most important. <laughs> Alright. But modern in terms of Some people say still one of the... the last unsolved classical problem. Yeah. It's, it's considered classical because it's over, it's over 150 years old, but it still requires pretty heavy complex analysis and stuff. Uh, the beginning, actually, uh, actually, let me tell you about how I made this presentation. Uh, the beginning, you guys, it's going to be a little colorful and stuff. I'm trying to get the idea across about the importance of prime numbers. The, also, in terms of later on, when I actually show you guys some math, I'm going to, I I made it specifically using, like, using the most, like, just calculus. Seriously, anybody who just, who has a good foundation in calculus, should be able to follow me to very, the very end. Now, uh, yeah, let's begin. So just remember, I'm, it's not going to be that serious. So prime numbers, what are they? Prime number is the natural number P greater than 1, but exactly 2 divided. We all know this. Example, that 23 is prime, 77 is not. And uh, why prime number is important? Because they're the building blocks of the natural number. Uh, very important. Uh, result is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that says every every natural number greater than two can be expressed as the unique product of prime numbers. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic. <coughs> now this is what I meant about I'm gonna get a little colorful for a little bit with cool images. So I'm trying to get a point across. Um, prime numbers arise naturally in the interface upon defining multiplication. What we're gonna do here is uh, this is I got this from some dude uh, Talking about later on. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting a circle, a little circle, a diameter of one. Just putting one and then off to the right, some thing. Then I'm going to get a circle of diameter two. You know, for exactly two circles of diameter one, take one circle of diameter two, take it off to infinity. And we're going to do this for all the numbers. I don't know how well you can see this. You guys see this? Well, the other one, it, it gets a little better. For you. I change the color from red to like kind of white blue. So. But whatever, every way it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. And uh, same thing for all of them. A circle, two circles of radius two fit exactly inside one circle of radius four because two times two is four. And the uh, next one we're going to do, um, to, to get my point across, where we're going to we're going to squish this image down. We're going to put we're going to put them all on a common axis. A common axis starting from a common origin, and see what happens. And this is what happens. You see, can I change the color to see it better? Do uh, you guys <coughs> see? All right, here's a circle of radius two, and here's two circles of radius two. Two circles of radius one inside one circle of radius two. Then a uh, circle of radius two and four, and so forth. You, you, you get the idea. Now, for example, now where are the prime numbers? First of all, yeah. What what is this image? Besides one of the coolest images you've ever seen, <laughs> it is a way to detect prime numbers. You know, well, you, you don't see it very well here. But there's lines it's not here, for example, where only two circles meet. You see how? Well, here only the circle of radius one and only the circle of radius two meet here. And then, I mean, they meet from this side too, but it's only the circle of radius two and the circle of radius one. So wherever only two circles meet, that's a prime number. Again, here for three, only the circle of radius three and the circle of radius one meet right here. So three is a prime number. But here in four, not only does the circle one meet here, but just two circles of radius two. So you see right here how there's more than just two circles meeting at this point? That's because that's not a prime number. And so forth. We're just going to zoom out of this image a little bit so you guys can feel the pattern. Is this picture your invention? No, I got this from some guy online, but right? I, uh, what's it called? No, but it, I, told, I emailed him and I was like, yeah, I, I was like, yes, this is one of the new images you guys have ever seen. It's, uh, <coughs> Of the scene. No. Yes, no, no, and we're going to talk about scenes. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, I, I show you this, right? Oh, uh, but I would have done it for you. <laughs> nah, I just needed to get the point across. Uh, 
That's why, yeah, let's just keep zooming out a little bit. As you see, the pattern is getting more intricate. And, uh, not yet, so, and let's go back actually a little bit. For example, yeah, and here, you see this line. Where this line meet right here, only the circle of radius one and the circle of whatever radius this is meet right there. Only those, those are the only two circles meeting at that little precise point. So that is a frame of view. Um, <coughs> so I'm sorry I had to go back to red. Actually, I can't find very many images of this. But either way, here's the prime number speckled through you know, with a line going up, and it tells you where uh, where there's only two circles meet. So actually, the color also can tell this, but not because the color is. The color yeah, yeah, no, no. So I'm gonna zoom in to like way out in the number line right now. This is the sieve around 1800. You know, right here we see a pair of twin lines. When you go up, way up there, there's exactly two prime numbers right there, these twin primes. Other than that, these are other prime numbers speckled around 1800. This is not a prime number. This is just to show you 1800. But you can't see it very well, but yeah, exactly. You see very concentrated red around there because a lot of numbers divide. <coughs> by so many circles meet there. Absolutely. A lot of numbers obviously divide 1800, so let's call it. So, um, let's call it. So that's uh, not a prime number, obviously. So yeah. So what are I'm, this is that was my little quick intro. Now we're just gonna talk about prime number theory for a little bit. Uh, you know what is prime number theory? And what are we trying to do here? And I also want to get across this point. How we are not dealing with any element of invention. We are really discovering. We're just think about it. What, what did I invent upon creating this image? All I'm doing was just, that's just the natural way numbers fit into themselves. So upon defining multiplication, that's the natural way numbers fit inside themselves. So, in other words, even if we did not define prime numbers, at the beginning, if I didn't say a prime number is a number with two divisors, this guy and that, it doesn't matter, the prime numbers would, net, would arise naturally out of this image as being the only number, the special numbers, where only two of these circles are. And uh, yeah, so it's a search. It's a search for the pattern in this image uh, where we're going to begin our study. So if you get a little confused, you know, during the presentation, maybe you don't understand the math, you just go back to this picture and remember what we're trying to do. And uh, basically, you see uh, what I'm. The last thing I want to say before we get started, actually, because it's still part of the intro. Um, is uh, yeah. So even if you don't get nothing out of the actual math we're gonna do, I hope this image help uh, help you want, helps you understand what we're trying to do. And just so even if you go away here with no math knowledge, you still have a sincere appreciation for like the ideas we're discussing. You know? Again, for sake of completeness, I'm putting this. Let's see. Uh, it's just this is. The first theorem I ever read about prime numbers is why I got interested. You put this theorem on me, 3,000 year old theorem. Just a quick sketch, and the same is your finite list of primes, multiply them all together, add one, most of you know this. <coughs> if, you, if you suppose this is your finite list of primes, whatever, you do the, you, you define this number, add one, and then by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic we said at the beginning, uh, either this big P is prime itself, but there exists a little other p star such that it divides this p by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, and it's a prime that's not on your list because this p star was going to be, and therefore you get a contradiction. If you keep doing this forever, that's the simple elementary thing that you're going to put in my frame. <coughs> now, the C of Aristophanes, who is an ancient Greek scholar who provides the simple algorithm to find the prime numbers up to a given number. Uh, explanation, uh, think about, most of you might have heard this before, you know, we're going to pick two and we're going to cancel out every other number that's a multiple of two. Every other number that's a multiple of two out the window, and we're just going to keep doing this till we just find all the primes. 
<laughs> I'll do a little picture to show you and then do a better job. It's like a little thing. So we take out all the multiples of two. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this for three. We'll take out all the multiples of three that are remaining. And five is your next prime number. All the multiples of five. And so forth. And this is just a little elegant way to find the prime number. And the guys left over, if you've already taken out every guy's multiple, is a prime number. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Right. So now, what are we doing? Formula for the prime. So the times of, since the time of the ancient Greeks, you know, mathematicians wondered, is there a, is there a formula for the prime? You know, such a P of N or a piece of N, such that it returns the nth prime number. For example, P of 1 is 2, in your first prime number. P of 2, 3, P of 3, 5, P of 